Hello, YouTube. This is Money from Houston of the ST Power Team. How are you guys doing today? This is going to be the beginning of the series for Minecraft. How to set up Minecraft servers, both Bucket and Vanilla. Also, how to install certain plugins, such as permissions, Icotomy, etc. So, this is going to be the beginning, the very basics. How to set up the server, first of all. Now, the server can be run off your computer. It could be run off a VPS that you buy. Or you could be running your computer through a VPN, like Tungle. And I'm going to show you how exactly. Okay, let's get started, shall we? First things first. You're going to want to download my little server starter that I have included for you in the link description. Now, see, they're going to be for Bucket or Default Minecraft. For right now, we're going to be concerned with the default Minecraft. This is the fastest and easiest. I would use the default Minecraft when you would just want to play with your friend. So it's just you and him, nothing big, not a whole server that you want people to populate. Just a little fun one for you and him. In this folder, it's the Minecraft server.exe. You can also get this uh, specific exe from the Minecraft website. Minecraft.net slash download. You can just download the multiplayer server. Once you've downloaded it and been put it in the area where you want to keep your um, servers, Dutch double click it and then let it do its thing. Now uh, remember, guys, the default vanilla Minecraft server is not going to be able to have plugins. So if you want. Um, world edit permissions a lot of people this is not the server for you you're gonna want the bucket server like I said this is maybe for like let's plays between you and a friend maybe a group of friends and that's pretty much it all right and once it's finished uh, preparing the spawn area you can just go ahead and close that off and if we check over here it's giving us these folders. I'm not going to show you how to edit them because uh, the editing process is going to be the same as for the bucket server. But let me show you how to take care of the bucket server. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but not really if you follow the instructions correctly. Now, in my server starter, you're going to get these folders. The start server for 32-bit computers and the start server for 64-bit computers. Now, typically, if you have at least 4 gigs of RAM on your computer, you're going to... Every single time. Now, typically, if you have at least 4... Oops, my bad. If you have at least 4 gigs of RAM on your computer, you're going to have six, a 64-bit uh, a 64 -bit installation of Windows. That allows you to fully utilize those 4 gigs and up of RAM. So, whichever your computer has, uh, you're going to want to run. It's going to be a bad file. Also, you're going to have the craftbucket.jar. Now, it's going to be uh, extremely possible that whenever this video gets out or whenever you're seeing it, that this craft bucket jar is going to be um, outdated. Could be by a lot. In that case, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to bucket.org and you're going to want to download the latest recommended build. Now, whenever you download, it's going to have this weird uh, craft bucket dot r whatever. So just rename it to craft bucket dot jar. That way, my little server starter that I made for you um, recognizes it and is able to run it. Let us bucket GUI is going to be something else that I'm going to teach you later for those that are incredibly newbie but still want to run a server. That way they don't have to know the console stuff. They could just see it within an actual program. Now let's run our server starter, shall we? Now it's going to open up the console. It's going to start creating the server. Now remember, guys, bucket servers allow you to use plugins. So all those things that you see, like amazing Minecraft servers. Uh, permissions, Icotomy, Locket, Protections, World Guard, World Edit, all those things that everyone likes on a Minecraft server. You're able to use those things on Bucket. Why? Well, because Bucket is a, it's a custom Minecraft server build, so it kind of exploits the game, sort of. So it allows you to um, change code around using plugins that people create. Anyways, back to the tutorial. Once you have the done message when you first run in the server, uh, you could just close it for now. Okay, this is where both um, Minecraft, the default vanilla, and the bucket come in, the changing and settings. Um, where you see the server.properties folder or a file, 
just open it. Um, if you want to open it with Notepad, well, Notepad, but I'm using Notepad++ because it's just a better coding uh, utility, which is a free download. If you guys want that, I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Now, this is what you're going to see when you first make a default server, a uh, new server. Well, the actual um, settings are very self-explanatory. Allow nether. Do you want the nether in your world? It's kind of like the hell. True for yes, false for no. Simple. Level name, I recommend this. I recommend you to keep this on world because commands on, um, on the plugins, they may require you to put the world, the name of the world, such as command book for time. So if you have an incredibly long name, just typing that, it's going to be a pain. So I would recommend just leaving that to world. These um, enable QWERTY. I, I would just leave that as false since most of you guys would not know what to do with that. Allow flight. False again. Server port. Leave that as default. Unless you're running it on Tungle, which is just, then it's going to be 11155, the Tungle port. Level type. Um, this is where um, you can start tweaking some stuff. Default will just give you the basic world. You can have large biomes, flat, but for most people, just put it as default. Enable Archon. This so this allows you to actually uh, remotely control your server with Archon. Most people are not going to know are not going to need it or know how to use it, so just leave it as false. Level seed, unless you want to get really creative with uh, world generation, you can add a seed if you want. Um, I'm just going to leave it as default for now. Server IP. This is where you're going to um, enter the IP what you want people to connect to your server with. Now, it can't just be any IP. It's going to uh, it's going to have to be either your VPS's um, IP, your VPN, such as your Tungle uh, virtual IP, or if it's going to be running your house, you're going to want your ISP's IP. Now, you can go to um, IP what's my ip.com websites like that to tell you it in this case because i'm just going to be teaching you how to run and set up a server i'm going to be putting local host this just allows it so it's just run on my computer and only i can connect to it nothing else needed max build height just leave it as default if you put it higher you're going to start seeing errors spawn npcs do you want npcs in your world i personally do so i'm going to leave it as true whitelist if you want only certain people to connect to your Minecraft server, you want to put this to true. Let's put this to true just for now, guys. Normally, I wouldn't if you want to have an open server, but you never know. Spawn animals. Do you want animals on your server? I do. Leave it as true. Snooper enabled. Now, Snooper was the latest. Uh, it was a feature added by Mojang. So um, it allows you to collect some small data about your computer, like um, the OS uh, is running 32-bit, 64-bit. Information about your drivers, processor, etc. Just leave it as true. I mean, it's not going to be much of a difference for us, but if you leave it as true, they're able to collect some data so it can improve your uh, future updates. Hardcore, do you want to have your server run hardcore mode? So if you die, you're done. I'm going to leave that as false. Texture pack. This is where it gets interesting. If you want everyone on your server to have one texture pack, you're going to put the um, download link there for the texture pack. Anyone who's not using it will not be able to enter the server. It will give them a link to get to the texture pack. Personally, it gets annoying, so people should be able to use whatever texture pack they want. Just leave it alone. Online mode, true or false. Another interesting feature. This is what allows you to run cracked servers, quote, unquote. If you put this as true, the server is going to is going to run every name that connects to it to the Minecraft database of accounts. So it's going to match the name and the password together. So for example, me, who, um, who my Money in Phoenix is a Minecraft account, is a valid one. I actually bought it. It's going to allow me on any online mode true server. However, if you have the cracked version, if it says online mode, if the server is um, running on online mode true, you will not be able to connect. So if you want to run a cracked server, you're going to want to put that as false. But putting that as false uh, really... Um, it really um, allows your server to be attacked by server hijackers. But I will help you address that problem later. And I will show you how to hijack the server so you know how to avoid getting that uh, for that to happen to yourself. PvP, do you want people to attack each other? Yes or no, true or false. Difficulty, one, zero. Um, zero is going to be... Uh, zero is going to be... 
uh, peaceful. And one is going to be easy. Remember that, guys. Game mode. Game mode zero is going to be... It's going to be creative mode. Not my bad, my bad. It's going to be survival mode. Game mode one is creative mode. So change whatever to you want. I'm going to put this as one because I want creative mode on my server. Max players. How many players do you want on your server? Just for the lulls, I'm going to change it to elite. Even though it's, I'm running on local host. Spawn monsters. Do you want monsters to spawn? I'm going to leave it alone. Generate structures. This is going to be those random um, things that appear in the Minecraft world, such as like temples, um, pyramids, that kind of stuff. The villages. I will leave it as true because it adds a nice ambiance to the server. You distance, just leave it alone. If you break it, you can break the server. The message of the day. This little message is what uh, is what it says when someone adds your server to their server list. So let's, for example, let's put, um, I don't know, dev server. Now, once we have everything the way we like it, we could just go ahead and save it. Exit. Now let's run our server again. When we're running our server, let's also open up Minecraft so I can show you guys that this is working. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and close Firefox. Now, if we check out this, it's gonna be spawning the uh, spawn areas again. Okay. Let's log in. Okay, now our Minecraft's open and our server should be up and loaded. So now we can go to multiplayer. And if we look here on our local host, you see we have our server up. You can also add it just by going to adding to whatever name you want. And for the server address, adding local host. And you will still connect. And your little message of the day that you added, remember, guys, I put dev server. It's right here. So if we um, connect to it, give it a little minute. Ah, and I didn't whitelist myself. Remember, guys, that I enabled that on my server? Now, there's two ways to do this. First of all, you're going to need to op yourself. So in the console, you could put op, then your name. There you go, and you're opt. Opt people are like the admins of the game, of the server. That's if you don't have permissions and don't have different levels of permissions. Any person that's opt is automatically going to be uh, whitelisted. So, for example, I can go into my dev server now. And as you can see, I am in. I'm pretty sure it's laggy for you guys since I'm recording this with Camtasia, but yeah, I'm in my server. And as you can see, I'm logged in. This is my internal IP because this is local host. But if you want someone to be whitelisted but you don't want them to be opt, you can go back to your server files. It's, uh, the whitelist.txt. Open that up. Just add the person's name. You can add it myself even though I'm op. Uh, what could we also add? I don't know, to add bacon, save it. Okay. We can minimize that. And if we de op ourselves, we can check back here. I'm no longer op. And remember, guys, op gave you whitelist powers. But since I'm no longer op, will I still be able to join? Oh, I remember. You have to reload the server once you whitelist someone. Let's reload that for a minute. All right.
Hmm. Did I remember to save this? Let's stop our server. You might need to restart the server. Remember, guys, if you wish, you don't even have to have whitelist on. I would do it. I just did it there for uh, proof of concept. So let's turn it off. Go to server, press any key to continue, reopen that. So as you can see, guys, this is a fairly simple way. And once the server's been run a few times, it's going to be pretty easy. It uh, opens up really fast. But remember, this is before plugins. Multiplayer, go to your server. And you're in your free to break stuff and whatever. So remember, guys, this has been Money and Phoenix from the VST Power Team. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And... Next tutorial is going to be down start how to start to add plugins. For example, uh, we're going to be doing command book next. So, remember guys, if you want the next tutorial, it's 10 likes for the next one to be released. 10 whole likes. It's pretty simple. And this is going to be a whole uh, series on how to create a complex Minecraft server. So we're going to do command book next. You know what? I'm going to change that. We're going to do permissions next. Permissions. That way we can establish what every person is going to be able to do. Then we're going to start. We're going to start to do plugins such as Command Book, Icotomy, etc. We're going to go down from there. So remember, guys, ten likes, and you're going to get the new tutorial. I hope this was able to help you, and this was clear and concise. This has been Money and Phoenix from the VST Power Team, and goodbye, guys. Enjoy.